thank you everyone for coming and I'd like to pay my respects to the Indigenous people of the land, Elders past, present and future. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the future of quality assurance. I've worked pretty closely on BQOL and BTRACE, which is our quality assurance systems. But before we start, I'd like to just add on a couple of things to Liz's um, presentation. Liz and I work quite, quite closely together. Um, and in conjunction with Don Muir from BQOL, we're actually trying to develop a honey signature like Liz showed from the FPTLC for yellow box and stringy bark. So hopefully in the future, on the East Coast, we'll actually have some of that data that you can use for your marketing to improve your yellow box, marketing of yellow box and stringy bark. We don't know how it's going to come out, but we're trying to collect enough samples at the moment of those particular honeys to be able to develop the signature. So just be aware that that's happening in the future. That's a grant that we've got through the DAF traceability program. Okay, so my presentation is on quality assurance. I'm going to highlight why quality insurance is really important. The benefits, the importance of industry standardisation, quality assurance, and I'm going to go through a couple of aspects of BQOL, but really going through the system is fairly boring. I'm going to suggest you watch the video on the website and do a case study on bee to tree. Now, before I start, can I just ask a show of hands of how many people are members of BQOL or B Trace? Okay, so we have some members, not a lot. So hopefully this will be informative to everyone. So uh, that one. Okay. So before I start, do you want to improve your efficiency and profits? Put up your hands. Everyone. Do you want to improve your reputation for your customers? Everyone. And do you want to meet your legal obligations as a honey producer, right? If you want to achieve those things, then embracing quality assurance programs is really going to help you achieve those things. And that's what this talk is going to be about, how quality assurance can help your business do those things. And I'm going to start with a definition of quality assurance. And there's a couple of words here that are particularly important. So quality assurance is a proactive process. That means it's not a tick the box. It's about you learning and improving through the processes and your data collection that you're doing. It's determining that it meets the quality standards. And as we've heard from the last two speakers, our quality standards may be weak, but hopefully the industry is working on improving that, and industry requirements. So that's what quality assurance is about. But the first thing I want to highlight is quality assurance is about, oh, it's about, go back, it's about business process improvements. It's about the ability to collect data and to understand how can I improve my business processes. So the benefits of undertaking it. The first thing is quality assurance is important to customers. So I did some research with, in conjunction with Liz where we looked at export markets. And one of the major indicators that our export marketing customers want is certification. They want to see that the honey is certified, that it's quality assured. And it's amazing how that little tick whether it's BQOL or BTRACE, is important to the export markets in particular. And if I just look at um, Malaysia as one of the export markets, this was the most important factor that they looked for in the labelling of their honey jar, is certification. And so that's improving customer satisfaction and trust. And by the way, that research looking at the export markets is available on the CRC for Honey Products website. 
So if you want to go in and look at all the export marketing research that we've done, please go to that website. Um, it, it helps in maintaining and improving your reputation. If you're meeting quality assurance standards or if you have a quality assurance process, you are developing a reputation as a high quality producer. And that reputation will be maintained. So that's really important in the business environment. And let's face it, in our current business environment, you're going to go through a couple of disruptions with Varroa for a start and with the importance of traceability. So these, these two disruptions, you're going to want to maintain your reputation. Part of quality assurance is data and collecting data. So if you watched Liz's um, presentation, she spoke about the importance of AI and how that's going to really change the industry. Well, that's true, but it can't change the industry unless we have data. So, and that data is about continuous process improvements. So quality assurance allows you to collect standardised data and so that you can see trends over the lifetime. So you can follow through and look at what's happened five years ago and now and what's changed. And so the B Qual and B Trace systems are aimed at allowing you to evaluate your own data to improve your business. You have to meet compliance guidelines. So I've got for Zans there. And like Liz said, in our research, we had a phenomenal amount of of jars of honey being sold that didn't meet the labelling requirements of Fazans. So you have to meet your guidelines, HACCP and biosecurity. It's um, the effectiveness and improving record keeping. And record keeping was one of the things that they highlighted in Varroa, the lack of record keeping and the importance of record keeping. So these systems are aimed at helping you achieve some of those things. Traceability. So when you watch Liz's website uh, presentation and at the end she had that, this is the marketing story. Can you remember that? And at the bottom she showed where the honey came from. Traceability. Customers want to see where did the honey come from? What part of Australia? Is it in the middle of the forest? Is it in agriculture area? So if you noticed on that, she had... Uh, uh, um, a geographical indicator of the uh, southwest of Western Australia. Traceability is going to be important for your customers, and these quality assurance systems can help do that. If you look at traceability, you've got lots of different points of data that you need to have to be able to verify that your honey is your honey from a certain region. One of those is the B Qual B Trace system. One of those is um, Liz's HPTLC, and one of them is the Codex. So all of those things are important. The other thing is that Australia is working on an international stage, and quality assurance is important for meeting our international um, guidelines and our international reputation. So they're the benefits of undertaking um, quality assurance, and in particular, B Qual and B Trace. And um, B Qual and B Trace, of course, were in your bag for you to have a look at. One of the things that's really important is that we have industry standardisation on quality assurance, and we have an industry standard on honey. So B Qual and B Trace are aiming to do this where we have an industry standard. They're owned by beekeepers for beekeepers. B Qual is a subsidiary of Arbic, which is the industry. It's owned by beekeepers. So by following this, it is about you working on a system that was developed by beekeepers for beekeepers. It's recognised both domestically and internationally as a great quality assurance system. It aligns with international standards. And by f more people joining BQOL and putting their data into the system, 
it allows us to evaluate the system for continuous industry improvement. Now, I was just speaking to Steve um, Taggart over here from Arbic before, and he was saying that they have to work with government. But the, uh, the best way for Arbic to work with government is to have the data that they need to put the arguments to government. And without that data, they, they lack the credibility. Working with BQOL and BTrace will allow the industry, the beekeepers, to develop and keep the data and analyse the data for continuous improvement in policy. Something that you may not be aware of, but it's really important if you want to develop in the future. So, BQOL and BTrace, they're two systems. One is for larger beekeepers, one is for smaller beekeepers. BTrace is fully online, so it allows smaller beekeepers to develop a quality assurance and to get into the process fully online, so you can do it yourselves. It's developed for the honey industry. It's online compliance assurance systems. BQOL has, and BTrace, they have third-party audited systems for compliance. So the third-party auditing process is critical in quality assurance. You cannot be seen to have a conflict of interest between the auditor and the industry. So having a third-party auditor is, is standard practice. They're easy to use, I'll show you that in a minute, and there are instructions available. Go to the website, we've done a video on how to use them, the manuals are there, they're screenshots taking you through step by step. It's really quite basic to use. And this is an example of the BQOL system. So you can see it's just a different cards, we call them cards, but just different um, data points that they're trying to use. We have standardised on frames because standardising on hives is a pointless exercise. Hive, hive size, hive, the number of boxes in a hive, it varies from state to state and it varies within states. So trying to standardise the data, it's easier to standardise on frames. So we have put that into this system so that it allows us to get standardised data out of the system. But you can see here, it's pretty basic to use. And it allows you to put in photos. So for example, if you're inspecting your hive, you pick up your phone, you take, click a couple of photos, you can stick it into the system. And then you can see what happened in the previous years. Um, it allows you to um, put upload through spreadsheets and download through spreadsheets. So if you put the data in for the last three or four years, you can download a spreadsheet and it will give you all of that data for three or four years that you have inputted. And you can use that to evaluate what has changed, how are things going? How have I changed what my honey production is like? It allows you to evaluate what is happening. And that's just an example. It's it's pretty basic, it's got on and off switches and it allows you to go from point to point. Like I said, I'm not going to go through the whole system, it's pretty boring. Go watch the video that's on the BQOL website. What it does allow is it allows internal member audits. Now we added this in in particular as feedback from beekeepers in the fact that you can audit yourself through the system before you go for an external audit. So if you're worried or you want to self-evaluate, so for example at my university we do internal audits every year and then we get external audits done every three years. So the internal audits are just for ourselves to know how we're going, where can we improve and all of those things. For large beekeepers in particular, these internal audits will be very helpful in going through the process. So it allows you to do an internal audit. Of course, you have to do external audits by a third party to comply, to get the membership and the tick, and part of that is corrective actions. Now, these are not aimed at being a big stick. 
you know, you've got to do this. These are aimed at improving your business processes. These are aimed at making sure that you can improve and develop your systems and your processes to meet industry guidelines and to improve your own beekeeping practices. Remember, the system was developed by beekeepers for beekeepers. So the system is aimed at improving your own processes. Um, wrong one. Now, one of the things I want to do is... Um, because we've standardised on beer qual, or the industry has standardised on beer qual, it offers a lot of benefits. And one of the benefits is that we're working on a project with the Victorian um, State Government, Agriculture Victoria and the Australian Research Data Commons and Arbind. Can you stand up, please? Where's Arbind? At the back there, Arbind is actually one of the people working on the project. He actually knows it a hell of a lot better than me. So if you have any questions, please go and see Arbind. But the idea of this project, and it's not up and running yet, it's still under development, is that it's improving and capturing and sharing information between orchards and beekeepers. And the idea is that this information is going to help beekeepers improve bee health, so you will know when a chemical, um, chemicals are about to be sprayed and therefore you can go and um, work on your hives prior so you can pull the bees in before the spraying happens or you can shift your hives or whatever. It's only aimed at pollination, I should say, um, so that you can improve your bee health in the pollination services. This is, by the way, a uh, Victorian project is my understanding, Arbind, so I don't know if it's going to be rolled out to other states, but I, it's a great example of BQOL is embedded in the system. So if you're a BQOL member, you actually don't have to do much except tick a box saying, yes, I want to be involved, and all of your data will be in this, and then you will get feedback on what um, chemical sprayings is happening in the or orchards that you uh, have your hives in. Now this is to help you and of course um, the orchards because if your hives have better health then they're pollinating better. So it's to help both sides of the party. So this is about continuous improvements within pollination processes and also to improve, to get data to further improve these processes as we go. And so aspects, because we've got a standard industry um, system, digitised system, and the APIs, which Liz talked about, are going into this case study. So all BQOL members, this is happening for you for nothing. So it's a really good advantage. If you're in pollination, that is. OK, so industry advantages, you opt in. You get seamless integration, so you actually don't have to do too much. It improves your decision making in offering pollination services. And hopefully, the idea is that this will help cost savings, quality improvements for beekeepers who are offering pollination services. That is the aim of what we're trying to achieve with this case study. Like I said, it's not up and running yet, but we're working towards it. And Arbind can probably tell you it's about mid next year sometime, I think, that we're trying to get it up and running. OK, so that's the end of my presentation. I'm very quick and to the point. Are there any questions?